So once again, things are going really well for Ubisoft. Okay, For some time, we didn't hear much from them. I feel they kind of disappeared in the shadow of the Activision scandal. But now they're back. Okay, And you can see, as I'm recording this, they are trending on Twitter in gaming, but not for good reasons. <laughs> once again, right? It is because they're going to disable loads of their online services and DLC activations for plenty of their older games. So you might have some of the older games and want to check if you purchase some of the DLCs. They might not be available anymore in the near future. So you might want to check this out. But this comes at a rather inconvenient point in time for Ubisoft because they just showed us two new games, new games, and they have their Ubisoft Forward event coming up in the near future. I think it's on the 10th of September. And in this video, I want to kind of speculate about some of the titles we may see uh, at this event because they just showed us two new new games right they showed us the division resurgence a the division mobile game which hopefully makes ubisoft as much money as call of duty mobile makes activision i think that's basically what this game is about it doesn't look awful it doesn't really excite me but i think there is quite a big crowd out there of people of young kids who enjoy playing maybe games like the division or call of duty on their mobile devices so fair enough you know i can understand it's not for me but i can understand why ubisoft is doing this and then they showed us this extensive Gameplay demo for Skull and Bones. I'm carefully looking at the like dislike ratio down there. It's people are not happy, okay? And I can understand why, to be honest with you. It just doesn't look very good. Remember, we've seen Skull and Bones gameplay. 23 minutes of Skull and Bones gameplay from E3 2018. Luckily, that's still available on YouTube. And I mean, look, already at that time, nobody was really hyped about this game because at that time it was still much closer to Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So it just felt like what the Assassin's Creed Black Flag multiplayer maybe should have been, <laughs> right? But they're trying to sell it to you as a separate game. But however, this gameplay demo from 2018 looked more gritty. It, it nearly kind of looked better, you know? I don't want to say it out loud because there are visual aspects of the other demo that did look better. But in terms of the gameplay, the water, it kind of looked better. And also, let's just talk about this for a second, right? Sea of Thieves. I don't know if you played Sea of Thieves, but the water in Sea of Thieves looks just like... It's incredible. It's an incredible water simulation. This is from 2018. Didn't... I mean, look, it's from 2018. This is what they're showing us. Look at this water. I'm not saying it looks like garbage, but it looks like garbage, okay? That's what it does. I understand they want to put this game out because they worked on it for 200 years and it probably went through 2,000 iterations and you can see that from that different gameplay that it did go through those iterations. But they got to put it out because otherwise all the time and money has been wasted. It's not going to be a very successful game. I, You know, you heard it here first. <laughs> I hope to be proven wrong. You know, I don't want to hate on the game. If you're excited about it, please leave it down in the comment section below. Are you really looking forward to this game? Then let me know. But I'm I'm not. And from what I've seen uh, down in the comments, other people are also not really. So people complain that there's no foot combat in this game and that you can't board other ships, which is ridiculous because that was such an epic moment for me personally in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You ride the ship and you're thinking to yourself, oh, how cool would it be if we could just board other ships? I literally thought that. And then five minutes later, you're doing it and it looks epic. It works well. You're boarding the ship. You're fighting on board with your swords on the other ship. Great experience. Why would they not have that in here? That is a unique selling point. That differentiates it massively from games like Thea of Thieves. I mean, you can board ships there, but it's just different. If you have a big crowd and lots of AIs, and it's this epic fight between two giant ships that are kind of connected with ropes and anchors. I think that's cool. It's different. It would have been fun. They took it out. People are complaining, rightly so, in my opinion. But here's Ubisoft talking about those two games. And they're like... Guys, we have an event coming up on the 10th of September. It's not far away, right? It's almost August and all that, you know. But we've got games that we're going to show you beforehand. Does that indicate that they have so much to show for the September event that they kind of have to put some things out of it and move it into separate announcements? And indeed, actually, there are quite a few games that Ubisoft or titles, you know, and brands and licenses that Ubisoft still holds that they could show here. And I'm going to fly through those obviously it's just me speculating i have no idea what they're going to show uh, at the september event but one big question mark that hovers in the air for me personally is whether they're going to double down on their warzone ripoff which is called ghost wreck and frontline okay now i can say that i've played the beta i can't show you gameplay and i'm not going to give you a crazy rant for that game that i played because that was like an early build invite only beta or something but i can tell you that the game is going to be free to play by the way uh, it's, it's a pure ripoff 
of what Warzone is, down to even animations, right? Maybe a little detail I can give away, at least in this open beta. You had like armor plates that you had to slot into your jacket like this by pressing four. It was even literally the same button. Now the map looked good, but the game felt sluggish. It didn't feel good. It's based on the Ghost Recon engine, the Anvil Next engine, I believe it's called, which is Ubisoft's in-house engine. It didn't feel good. There's no way that that game is going to compete with a game like Warzone. In my opinion, you know, again, speculating. I'm happy to be proven wrong on things like this, but that's why I'm so curious to see whether they're going to double down on this in the September show. Are they literally going to say, yeah, it's going to come out early 2023 or something, big launch. Now we're finally in the Battle Royale arena, I guess, after, what was the other game called? Hyperloop? Hyperscape? It was called Hyperscape. Uh, came out 2020 and it was a Ubisoft built Anvil engine based Battle Royale game, which flopped terribly. I think it doesn't even exist anymore. So there's a bit of history between Battle Royale games and Ubisoft. I think it's too late. I mean, are you guys still hyped for more Battle Royale games or are you happy with what you have? Do you want to see other concepts? Leave that down in the comments as well, right? Because I'm curious. Because I'm just, I mean, I'm not hyped, man. I'm looking at this. I played the open beta. It's even it's free to play. It doesn't do anything for me, but it's going to be interesting to see whether they're going to show it at the September event. Another game that Ubisoft is hopefully working on is Beyond Good and Evil 2. I think people are hyped for this, okay? It's like, I think a PlayStation 2 sequel or something like this, right? I've never played the original. It looks cool. All the trailers they showed look cool. We've seen this gameplay here. I don't know when this came out in, in 2018. I think this is not what the game ultimately is going to look like. I think it's like the other game that they're working on it. They're evolving it constantly, you know, like Skull and Bones. And the final result will probably look quite different from what they show here. And there were plenty of those trailers uh, for Beyond Good and Evil over the years. And I have to say, they always look great, whether it's a cinematic trailer or it's gameplay trailers. It always looked interesting. It looked like something I would want to explore. It feels like an easy win, right? People are hyped every time just the Beyond Good and Evil comes on screen or something related to a pick. People are losing their mind, okay? So this seems like such an easy win for them. In late May this year, Ubisoft said uh, not only that they're still working on it, but that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is one of the most ambitious games that they they're working on yet. Also, there was news a few days ago that external playtesting has now started on Beyond Good and Evil 2. So I guess the game is still in the works. It's confirmed. And with all those rumors going around, I guess there's reason to assume that we may see it at the September showcase, or at least see something. They already showed the gameplay at plenty of cinematic trailers, so I guess maybe they don't get away with another cinematic trailer. They have to show us raw, hard gameplay and maybe give us a release date, hopefully, fingers crossed. Which takes us to the next game on my list, which is Assassin's Creed, all right? I, I don't think they can skip Assassin's Creed. They just had the 15 year anniversary of the game. And um, during the celebrations of that 15 year anniversary, basically they said, you're gonna hear more about the next Assassin's Creed in September. So we can, I think, safely assume that they're gonna show us something, probably just a teaser and the name for the next game. Um, I, again, I feel like Ubisoft is kind of misled on their assumption of, of the hype levels that a new Assassin's Creed generates, which, which feels like not much. I understand there is a core fan base out there, right? Some people are super hyped for every single Assassin's Creed game. They love the law and everything. That's fair. That's cool. But I feel the overall response that I see on platforms like Reddit or on Twitter when a new Assassin's Creed game gets like announced, it's just, most people say like, I haven't even finished the last one. Like, I understand they're trying to take slightly bigger breaks now, right? It's been two years, right? Ubisoft is nervous. They're like, it's been two years, guys. We didn't do an Assassin's Creed. We quickly have to release one. So they're gonna definitely show us something at the September event. I, you know, I don't wanna scare you, especially the Assassin's Creed fans out there, but there is also a possibility that the direction of the next Assassin's Creed game will be much more going towards a game as a service type of concept okay for the longer longevity because we've seen that in the in, in the recent years the decisions that ubisoft made indicate that they are aware that some of their games just fade too fast okay they come out people play them for a few weeks they finish them or don't they put them in the con they go away so especially with the last two assassin's creed games i think i've seen numbers somewhere that the longevity the amount of hours that people put into the games have significantly gone up okay so people play those games longer and they might continue that trend with a games as a service concept for Assassin's Creed where they update missions. Maybe you can even get another city at some point. Maybe they won't even, like if it's a huge announcement possibly, they won't even launch real new Assassin's Creed games anymore. It's just huge DLCs for this one thing, kind of like Destiny 2 did it or something, where the next Assassin's Creed game happens as kind of a life service concept. I know I would hate it. I think it's a terrible idea. 
But I can totally see Ubisoft going down that route because their focus is profit, right? And they're like, hey, other people have games that are games as a service. Why don't we do that? They make money, then we make money. And it just, it just doesn't work. I, I've spoken about this in countless other videos. Let's continue. Avatar Frontiers of Tomorrow is another license that Ubisoft is making a game for. And I mean, we've seen this trailer. This is supposedly a gameplay trailer, right? We've seen some of those before. It looks great, obviously. I guess that is like the key trademark of the Avatar franchise. There's not much there, right? No substance, but it looks really, really cool. So they're working on this. It's based on the Snowdrop engine and uh, we'll see where it goes because the thing is we haven't seen anything. This game is currently still announced to release this year, 2022, and we don't know what it is. Like. I assume it's going to be more or less a ripoff of their own concepts. Okay, like it, it, I could imagine it, for example, like, I don't know, like an open world game that feels a little bit like Far Cry, right? But obviously, you know, with, with a heavy avatar twist on top of it, but you roam the lands, you ride on your horse, you discover places. It feels kind of like a Far Cry game, but it's an avatar game. But of course, I'm just speculating because we know, know nothing. And to be fair with you, I'm going to say it here now. I'm predicting it's going to be delayed. They will show us something. Hopefully gameplay. I mean, at this point, if they're going to release the game later this year, they have to show us gameplay, right? I mean, there has to be something there that's presentable, I guess, like real actual gameplay. What are you going to do in the game? Also important to mention that if this game comes out, it's probably going to come out, you know, holiday break, October, September, November, towards the end of the year when we get all the big game releases and developers and publishers try to cash in on the Christmas market. So there's no Assassin's Creed this year, for sure. So Ubisoft is going to have to have something that fits that gap. Currently this game, again, announced for 2022. So it might as well come out this year for Christmas, whatever it is. The question is just whether they're gonna confirm that 2022 release date at the September show or not. Are you guys hyped about this game? Do you wanna play this? Are you hyped about the new Avatar movie? Let's move on. So we've gotten a little bit of Sam Fisher, right? In, uh, what was it? Wildlands, I think it was, right? He had a little appearance there little cameo and Ubisoft has been teasing us for quite some time now that they are working on some kind of new Splinter Cell game. We know that they are remaking Splinter Cell 1 and I know their focus at the moment is on that. They're like, it's a full remake, right? They're redoing the whole game. It's a big thing. It's not what I want though. I want a 2022 up to speed with current gameplay mechanics, Splinter Cell game with cool settings with updated everything. I don't mind the remake per se. It's probably gonna be a good game. I enjoyed the first Splinter Cell game. It was fun. It felt clunky at the time. I'm sure they're gonna work on that. But the last proper Splinter Cell game is nine years ago. Okay, Blacklist was the last Splinter Cell game. And in my opinion, it's just time that we're getting something fresh. I want something different. I want them to properly look at this franchise. And again, a little bit like with Beyond Good and Evil 2, it's an easy win. People are so hyped for the next Splinter Cell game. Whatever they would deliver, people would play it. I don't know why they're not cashing in on it. Yeah, here's a remaster or remake of Splinter Cell 1. I'm not hyped for that in particular. And it's a shame that they're not doing, doing more with this franchise. They could potentially also outsource it, right? Like the Splinter Cell franchise, why does it need to lay with Ubisoft? Why do they have to make those games? There are thousands of other really talented developers who could just take a franchise like Splinter Cell and make a kick-ass game, but no, you know, it's... <laughs> It's all these little things where Ubisoft just make themselves look like twats. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. You have all these games, all these franchises, and what comes around? Nothing. Anyway, anyway I'm getting rolled up again. The next game on my list is the Ubisoft Star Wars game. All we know about the Ubisoft Star Wars game is that the next Star Wars game that's coming out is Jedi Survivor, right? Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is the sequel to Fallen Order. So surely Disney would want to make sure that all their focus is now on this one game first, okay? That comes out 2023. So I don't think that we're gonna see anything about the Star Wars game at the September showcase in a few weeks, simply because it's in very early development, that's for sure. Maybe we'll get a teaser or a name or something, but definitely, I'm not saying definitely, who knows, but I don't think we'll see gameplay or anything that's really gonna tell us what this game is gonna be. I think they're working on it behind closed doors, and, and that's something I'm curious about. A Ubisoft Star Wars game, how is that gonna look? I'm genuinely curious, but it's gonna be a while until we actually see something um, along those lines. And then, there are like smaller games that some people are excited about, like the Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake. 
I saw quite a few tweets about that. People want to see that and I actually hyped about it. I played the original. That was a fun game. I don't know if you need to remake it. In the past, we already got like a quite extensive segment at like another Ubisoft uh, forward uh, about this game. You can see the dislike ratio is not that bad. It could be worse, okay? People are hyped. This is how it looks when people are hyped about a Ubisoft game. <laughs> But this is coming as well, okay? It's out there and some people are, are hyped about it, okay? I, I don't know what to say about it. But in general, I mean, we're looking at this list and it is a really weird one because there are so many titles here and they are not bad titles. You know, the Assassin's Creed franchise is a potent franchise that could tell a lot of exciting stories. Beyond Good and Evil 2, the Ghost Recon franchise, the potential that could be in an Avatar game, right? All these franchises, the, the Splinter Cell, that they own that brand, all these franchises hold so much potential and you're like, if each one of those franchises would just be really fleshed out and well done and thought through and, and follow like a good concept, then each one could be a huge game. But I can tell you already that that's not going to be the case because that's the case every single time with Ubisoft, okay? Everything seems to be just a blender with no substance. I have been forgiving and in the past Ubisoft have made great games. They have not always been this sleazy, if you want to call it that. But in recent years, particularly, the games got repetitive, the games got boring and uninspired. And it's like a red thread that goes through all the games, so all the recent games, in my opinion, uh, of Ubisoft. On top of that, they make dumb mistakes, like holding some of their like Riders Republic games behind their own Star Wars, right? They're like, no, this game can only be purchased on Ubisoft Connect, I think they call it these days, or Uplay or whatever it is. So nobody plays those games. Probably Riders Republic is fun, okay, with friends doing all the stunts, whatever, but it's hidden behind their stupid platform. So no, so nobody's playing it, okay? I'm not playing it at least, it's not gonna happen. So I'm not giving up hope on Ubisoft. I'm not saying, oh, you know, Ubisoft at this point, they, they are on a decline, everything they're gonna do is terrible. I think there's hope. I think Ubisoft is lacking talent. I think Ubisoft is struggling with decision-making, right, to making the right decisions that are not just uh, inspired by people either in boardrooms wearing suits or some other, you know, random stranger selected to give feedback on some focus groups where they just make terrible decisions and then games are inspired by that. Because that seems to be a thing that Ubisoft has been doing for quite some time, uh, making wrong decisions. And I hope maybe we'll see some positive change coming our way in the September event. These are basically my thoughts, okay? This is what I see coming towards us with Ubisoft in the near future. Are you hyped about any of those titles? Which one of the games that I listed or spoke about today is like your most anticipated one? Leave that down in the comments. Are there games that I forgot? Ubisoft titles that I should have mentioned but didn't. All of that, please, down in the comments. I would appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time. You can smash the like button. That would be appreciated. It helps the channel out. You can subscribe because I'd hope to see you in another video. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I'm out. Bye.